Hey everyone, I have a little bit of a different video today. I see so many questions about data fetching in Next.js, you know, which data fetching method to use um, and when it should be used. I thought I would do a video just talking through that because if you're new coming to Next.js, then this stuff is really, really important. So I've got slides. Uh, we're not going to be coding in this video. I do have examples of these data fetching methods in my Next.js um, getting started course. So if you want to go see code examples straight away, then you can go check it out over there. However, I will make a follow up video to this and show you how to do all of these things within Next.js. So we're going to go through the data fetching methods and when you should use them. And the main consideration is the performance of the website. So speed, search engine optimization, um, and also the best experience for your users. So choosing the right way to bring in data is really important. I think it's important to understand the different options available to you so you can choose which one to utilize in a given situation. And the beauty of Next is that you can use all of the data fetching methods within a single application where there's scope for it. So if you think of a large you know, SaaS application or a large store or something like that, you're going to have your marketing pages, you're going to have a blog, um, a dashboard hidden behind a login wall, or maybe you're going to have an online store as well. So if we break that down, marketing pages, just information, we want those to be static pages. You're going to have a blog again, it'd be great if that could be statically generated. You're going to have a dashboard, which like I said, it's hidden behind a login. You want to be really up to date and you don't really care about um, search engine optimization, things like that. So you would do client side data fetching for your dashboard usually. And if you have an online store, you will use server side rendering for your online store. And we'll talk a little bit about why um, as we go on. You have next, you can use um, all of these different methods within a single application, like really easily. Um, and like I say, I'm gonna make a follow up video giving examples of how to do each of these different methods. But today I'm just gonna talk through each of them, um, sort of the pros and cons and when you would use them. So the first thing to call out is if you are a React developer and you're just kind of dabbling in Next, depending on your project, you can just use normal React data fetching methods. You can, for example, you can make use of Next um, file-based routing. Um, you might use the Next image component, things like that but you can just use normal React data fetching methods. So you can pull in your data, use use effect, whatever you want to do, you can just use normal React data fetching methods. So an example of that, maybe you're doing a data-driven dashboard in React, your team is familiar with, with React, um, but you want to use, use Next. So you have, you know, like static homepage, for example, in your dashboard, you can just use the normal React lifecycle methods. I would say um, make use of libraries such as Use SWR, um, which is stale while we validate, or React Query. Um, they offer some great functionality for your client side data fetching, such as you know refetching when you're changing tabs. It's caching your data. Um, really powerful libraries, both of them. So if you are doing client side data fetching, I would recommend using those libraries. Um, but other than that, you can just use normal React data fetching methods. The great thing about Next is these data fetching methods. I mean, the, it's it, there's a lot more to offer, but actually these data fetching methods are really powerful and I think it makes Next um, what it is. And you don't, you don't really want to just use normal React data fetching. I think most websites you will have a place for um, what we're gonna talk about next. So static site generation, um, I think it's a future. It's the best way to build websites where you can do it. It will give the best performance for the user. How does it work? So basically, when you um, run your next build command, all of the data fetching is performed at build time. And what it's then gonna do for all of the pages that you have got, it's going to generate the static HTML files and they're gonna be delivered from the server. So. You know, this is how the webs the web used to work you know 15 years ago every website was basically just uh, static html files delivered from a server somewhere and this is the best performing way to deliver a website just a static html file and that is it so 
this is the way to go uh, if you can do it. So two considerations, I guess, on how we're going to um, how we're going to fetch our data. So we can either do it all at build time, which um, if you have a relatively small site with not too many pages, that's a great choice. Or we can build pages once they've been visited on the website. So let's talk through an example. Let's say you have a web design agency and you might have 20, 30 blog posts and a few pages on your website. You know, this is a great example of a site. Just statically build it all at build time. It's not gonna take long at all to do that. And it's gonna be essentially a static HTML website, which is extremely performant and it's gonna be great for SEO and things like that. And everything's done at build. On the flip side, if you have a huge blog with thousands of posts, do you really wanna perform thousands of data requests um, every time you rebuild your website? The answer to that should be no. Um, I guess the the sort of boundary, the cutoff, um, there's nothing set in stone. There's nothing stopping you from having a thousand pages built at build time, other than the fact it's gonna take a while to build your website. There's nothing stopping you to do that. So. For me, I would say, you know, if you have more than 100, 150 pages, you know, I when you're updating websites quite a lot, um, you probably don't want to build it all um, at build time. But that that sort of cutoff point, it might differ from uh, team to team. So the other option is to build it once it's been visited. And the way that works is rather than declaring all of your routes up front, so for example, on the website, um, the web dev site where you have um, a, a small blog, what you do is you tell Next.js, here is all of my blog posts. So you will fetch all of your blog posts at build time and then you will pass them in to, um, you will pass them in as, uh, as an array of pages and say like, So again, at build time, you would fetch all of your posts um, and then depending on how many pages you would have, you would then build the the pages. So you might have blog um, slash technology as a category slash page one um, and you might have three pages. So it would build page one, two and three. And then when you try and paginate through that list, you will go to a different page essentially. Um, 
So there's there's no reason, I guess my point is that you can't mix and match a little bit. So you can statically generate the the, the page, your blog homepage, but then you can do client side data fetching for the pagination or an infinite scroll. Um, if that's how you want your website to work, you can absolutely do that. And it's really easy again with um, use SWR. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, like I said, where you can statically generate, do it. It's gonna be the far best performance. The other great thing about Next is incremental static regeneration. So if you imagine um, the um, the small small website that we have a few blog posts, um, without incremental static regeneration, what we might need to do every time we make a blog post, we would need to rebuild our website. And that's generally how static websites, um, that's generally what happens. And you can do that through an automated process most of the time. Um, however, it's not ideal. So incremental static regeneration allows us to not rebuild the whole website, but just refetch the data for any given page at a certain interval. So let's say you have that busy blog, but you want to have the the most recent post up to date on your homepage. You might want to refetch that data every every hour. Let's say you you might make a couple of blog posts a day. Um, so every hour, you know, the blog posts they're not really time sensitive. So every hour, you're just gonna go and refetch that data, and that's absolutely fine. It will keep your website relatively up to date within within the hour. It may run an hour behind. There might be an hour delay for for your users in seeing a blog post from when you're putting it onto your content management system to it actually being sent to your users. There could theoretically be an hour's delay. If you're okay with that, then you can absolutely do that. A, a, a great benefit of this is obviously you're making very few requests to your content management system. There's gonna be 24 requests a day for that given page. So I'm saying an hour, you can have this interval as, as small as you like. So if you imagine, you know, you're a news site and of course some of the news may be time sensitive, you want it to be always really fresh, you could set this to one minute. And the way this works is, you know, without going into the details, basically, Every, every minute, the first user that visits the website after this minute time period, they're gonna be showing, um, they're gonna be displayed the, the old data. I mean, we're talking a minute old data here. They're gonna be shown the, the old statically generated page, and then it's gonna trigger a new page to be built in the background so that the next users of the website, they will see the newly statically generated page. So. Like I say, after whatever given time period that you set out, if it's 60 seconds, the first user that comes on, they're gonna see the the static page that was generated from the previous interval. Um, but then the, the following users after that, they will see the newly statically generated page. So that's a great way of keeping your website up to date. Um, I have it on my website for the YouTube page. We're fetching data from the YouTube API. Of course, it's a static page, but every day, every 24 hours, I've got it set to it will refetch the data. Um, so it's relatively up to date. And you know, the YouTube API is not very generous on the free tier. So it literally one request a day and it keeps the website up to date like that. So incremental static regeneration is great, like I said, for your pages of lists and stuff like that, um, where you wanna keep them relatively up to date without rebuilding your website. So server-side rendering, like I say, I would say if you can statically build a website, then do it. Um, if you need the data to be always up to date with your backend, then server-side rendering is a great way to do that. Um, of course, client-side data fetching, it's always gonna be up to date with your backend because you're gonna perform that data fetch on every request. Um, server-side rendering, it works in a very similar way. You're gonna perform a data fetch on every single request um however when you do client side data fetching what you will see is um some html will be loaded on the page you might have your your header your menu and and some bits on a page and you're going to see a loading state for the data that is being loaded um and what's basically happening with that is you're serving 
the user a HTML page. Um, and then once the data fetch is completed, you're injecting that HTML into the DOM and it's then being displayed on the screen. When you do server-side rendering, what's happening is the user will go to a page, they'll see a blank screen. They won't see anything because in the background, the request has been made by the server and the server is then creating the HTML page and it's then displaying the full HTML page to the user in the browser. Um, you know, this is better for search engine optimization than the sort of injecting the HTML um, as you go. Search engines are getting better at reading that. You know, I'm not really an expert in, you know, the, the differences, but server-side rendering is a lot better for um, search engines to um, scrape and crawl your website and and read the data from your website. So if you have like I say a shop here, of course you want the prices to always be up to date. If you think, oh, we could do a, a, a store which is statically generated, I mean, in theory you could, but there's always that chance that you go into the CMS and you change a price, but then your user comes on and sees an out of date price, um, which you probably wouldn't want. So server-side rendering, it's fetched on every single request, similar to client-side rendering. So it's always gonna be up to date. However, it's much better for search engine optimization um, and performance reasons, because the, the full HTML document is coming from the server complete. So, and again, you, you can do the same thing with the, uh, like we talked about with the static site, where maybe you want a server-side render the first some information and then paginate some more information and you can load that from the client side, no problem. Um, so yeah, really a store is the best example I can think of for server-side rendering. Um, it's good for authentication as well, where you can do authentication on the server. So the user's just gonna see a blank white screen. If they're not authenticated, then they can be redirected and they won't see anything other than a blank white screen. Um, so hopefully, this makes sense and is a good introduction to the Next.js data fetching methods. Like I say, in summary, if you can statically generate um, and use that, it's the best performance um, and that's the way forward for me. Um, if you are building a dashboard and you know it's not important uh, for SEO because it's behind a login or something like that, you can do normal client-side data fetching. Um, however, I would advise using um, using a library to help you out with that. Um, if you do want the performance benefits, uh, such as for like SEO, but you also need the data to be really up to date, then server-side rendering is the way forward. I would say that a watch out for when you're doing server-side rendering, obviously you're making a request to your backend on every single um, every single page load. So just, again, you're gonna need a more powerful backend server and some of the free tier plans that, you know, CMSs offer, it, it may not be appropriate if you get a lot of traffic. Um, you're gonna need a good backend server because the user is gonna see literally nothing until the request is made. So you don't want it to be performance slow to your backend because you could just see a blank screen for however long it takes to make that request. So like I said, I'm gonna do a follow-up video in the next couple of days with examples of exactly how to do all of these data fetching methods. I hope this helps and answers some of the questions that I'm seeing on data fetching and you now have a, a much better idea of when to use each data fetching method. So hopefully this helps. I will see you in the next video.